But what if the current investor anxiety actually meant that the markets were about to go up in a big way? They've been going up for about seven sessions now, but Nicholas Bloom, he's an associate professor of economics at Sanford, thinks they're going to keep going that way. His research focuses on the impact that uncertainty has on markets, and it happens to match the research of a former Stanford professor, a gentleman you may know of, named Ben Bernanke. Bloom, also a former advisor to the UK Treasury Department, and he's joining us now uh, from London. Nick, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and what is uncertainty? First of all, how do you measure the uncertainty that's out there right now? Well, it's a good question. Uncertainty is pretty hard to measure. I think the, uh, the index I normally use, which is really the market's favorite definition, is looking at stock market volatility and in particular implied volatility, so something like the VIX index, which looks at implied volatility going ahead. And the VIX is, is off its highs right now, but is it at a level where, that you think is pretty bullish? The, the VIX is pretty high. I mean, it's been hovering around 30, uh, which is reasonably high by historical standards. If you go back to, for example, the mid-2000s, it was around 15 to 20. So what's happened is, of course, there's a huge spike in uncertainty after the uh, credit crunch and Lehman's exploded. Things calmed down again at the beginning of the year, and then there's been another big spike with the uh, Greek crisis, and it's pushed stocks rapidly down because of the fear and uncertainty over what's happening. So what does this tell us about where stocks are going to go from here? I mean, why is this a good thing that there's all this uncertainty out there? Well, I, I mean, I'm bullish, I should say. I, I'm invested very heavily in the stock market, and my belief is just driven on historical research. I've looked at 17 prior uncertainty shocks, things going all the way back to the Cuban Missile Crisis, assassination of JFK, through to 9-11. And on average, what you see is uncertainty spikes after some nasty event. For example, right now, the uh, kind of fiscal crisis, stocks plunge, uh, the economy plunges because, of course, Firms wait when our firms are uncertain about the future. The best thing to do is to pause hiring and pause investing, and consumers do the same. But once uncertainty passes, uh, they get back into action again, and the stock market typically recovers. So, just based on uh, what's happened historically, I'd be forecasting a strong recovery going forward. Well, we talked to Mark Zandi, who's chief economist at uh, Moody's Analytics, and he listed some of the things that are causing uncertainty right now. He talked about uh, banks being unsure what kind of capital requirements are going to be put in place in financial legislation. He said power companies are waiting to see if the government caps carbon emissions. He says human resource departments are waiting for enactment um, to, of, of uh, health care reform. So, I mean, these uncertainties, aren't they going to be hanging around here for, for a little while before they're resolved enough to then perhaps see a rally in stocks? They are. There's a set of ongoing uncertainties. I, I think what's caused the big recent spike has been the trigger is Greece, but really the underlying problem is you have a tension of governments wanting to spend more money to try and get us out of the, the recession. But on the other hand, it's becoming very clear that the budgetary position is in bad shape. And of course, that leaves governments in a dilemma over what to do. And you can see in Europe and the US, there's been fighting on both sides in terms of spending more or spending less. And the uncertainty over which way that's going to go has led to a lot of volatility. So, you know, at one extreme, you could have a continuous uh, big levels of expenditure cutting taxes, and at the other, you could have taxes going up and expenditure falling. But I think that's likely to be temporary. I mean, most of the uh, reforms going on in Europe, for example, in southern Europe, particularly Spain and Greece, they've been voting on the last week or two. Uh, a lot of the fiscal numbers are slowly coming in. The IMF's report that came out last week was talking about uh, things clearing up substantially by the end of the year. So based on that, and to be honest, based on past experience of looking at 17 previous shocks, mm -hmm. these spikes of uncertainty tend to last no more than six months. And I think we're about three months into the current spike. So my prediction is uh, by the fall, things will have cleared up. Well, we'll see if history is going to be our guide once again this time. Uh, Nicholas Bloom, professor of economics at Stanford, studying uncertainty and its effect on markets. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.